Philadelphia, city of brotherly love, and home to a very different kind of fellowship. Tonight, Philadelphia is hosting one of the country's biggest vampire events. Dracula's ball, going there tonight. Sales clerk Jen Hoffman has traveled from Delaware to attend Dracula's Ball. For her, the event offers excitement and a chance to celebrate an identity many would call taboo. Jen says she's a vampire and she drinks human blood. Tonight, she'll quench her thirst. Jen's friend, Cheryl, has agreed to let Jen suck her blood. But before the feeding, Jen and Cheryl will attend Dracula's Ball. In addition to being a vampire, Jen's also a goth, a person who enjoys medieval fashion and fantasy. With costume, corset, wigs, and makeup, the women transform themselves into gothic princesses. Long after the sun has set and darkness envelops the city, Dracula's ball is in full swing. The dance floor is crowded with goths, vampires, and everything in between. Many partygoers are self-proclaimed vampire lifestylers, people who embrace the look, if not the deed. Fake fangs, erotic costumes, and ghostly contact lenses make clear these folks enjoy being different. No blood play is allowed in the club, but the energy at the ball whets Jen's appetite. It's time for her to dine on blood. Jen burns herbs to cleanse the hotel room. She'll use medical lancets to draw Cheryl's blood. It's been one month since I fed, so this for me is kind of a good pivotal moment to hold me over till the next round and yeah, I'm a little hungry. <laughs> With mounting excitement, Jen pricks Cheryl's finger. It's only a drop, but the first of many. In the age of AIDS, few would take so great a risk. However, these blood drinkers are tested regularly and are confident that they are disease free. Ten minutes later, as dawn breaks, the feeding ends. I want more, but there are other days. The vampire ball may be over, but Jen has no plans to stop feeding on blood anytime soon.